I cherish peace with all my heart. I don't care how many men, women, and children I need to kill to get it. Here's your look at the McFarlane Toys, DC Multiverse, The Suicide Squad, Peacemaker. A huge, hulking specimen with muscles on his muscles. Peacemaker is a world-class marksman, just like his fellow squad member Bloodsport. But if you ask him, better. He's more than willing to fight, kill, and even start a war. But of course, it's all in the name of keeping the peace. Gather around, friends and colleagues, before we get a closer look at Peacemaker. Just in case, I'm sure you guys would want to see what he looks like with the rest of the Suicide Squad member. Let me deliver that by bringing in these figures. By the way, Peacemaker is the fourth and final figure from the Suicide Squad wave. Technically, yes, there's King Shark, which we will be looking at as a fifth figure. And I didn't put it in order of importance or favorites either. Just so happened that Peacemaker just happened to come include with the arms of King Shark, and I couldn't really do the arms just by themselves. I had to attach them, so I decided to leave it for the last. Needless to say, though, to show you what he looks like with some of the other Suicide Squad members, we'll pair him next to a figure that has difficult times standing. Here he is next to Bloodsport. He's about the same height as Bloodsport, maybe just a little bit shorter. Comparing him next to a figure that didn't have any difficulty or any real difficulty standing, here he is next to Harley Quinn. And another figure that had some difficulty standing. Hot, cold, hot, cold. Here he is next to, of course, Polka Dot Man. Polka Dot Man and Bloodsport have had difficulty standing. I think a lot of it can be contributed to the fact that their their feet are so close to together with the tops of their boots that it doesn't give you enough clearance. It doesn't give you enough mileage to get those feet completely flat. Ironically enough, even though I did make fun of the fact that Harley Quinn had such noticeable ankle pegs, she doesn't have any difficulty standing, nor does Peacemaker here either. Under normal circumstances, I would normally first look at the trading card, then look at the display stand. But seeing as I've just had these roaming shark arms off to the side, we'll have a look at these first. And then, of course, we can finish off King Shark and his review will be coming up shortly right after. You do have two large mauling hands for the King Shark. And you can see they do attach to something, though nothing right now, until we reach off to the side and just happen to have everything in preparation. Look at the size of King Shark, by the way, just pairing him next to Peacemaker. He's not going to be ripping much of anything apart until we actually put the arms in place, so we can go ahead and grab these arms now. And we'll attach these. Now, he does sort of have a workable thumb, so we'll stick with still the same rule of thumb that thumbsies go in. We'll snap the first arm in place. And then we'll do the exact same thing on the other side. If you have watched by my, I hope, I hope all these reviews. You remember I did have some difficulty putting everything together. Actually, once I took the tummy and I put that in first, then the torso seemed to fit in fine and good. And then finally the head. And I'll form the head. And as you can see, again, a very large sized king shark. Now, there's also the gold label standalone release King Shark. And I don't think there's anything really different from a body standpoint. I think his his trunks, his shorts, are those jorts? Is that jean shorts? John Cena would know. I, in fact, I'd be able to ask him. I think that's the only thing that's different between the two figures. Um, other than that, I think it's the exact same King Shark from one to the other and knocking everything over in the process. But I think they are the exact same figure. I'm not really sure whether I will still get that gold label King Shark. If you'd like to certainly see a comparison of the gold label versus the collect and connect or build a figure King Shark. Let me know down below in the comments section. In the meantime, though, we're going to go ahead and just grab King Shark. We'll move him out of the way. And like I said, a review of him will be coming up shortly. Let's just put Peacemaker back in the middle of the frame here. Okay, going back to regular business, he comes included with his trading card. Trading card features John Cena. I don't know if you can actually see it or not. It kind of just looks like it's a blue background, but... I assure you, John Cena is actually posed there, looking like Peacemaker. And again, pulling it from the source material. Thank you, McFarlane Toys. I don't know if you're actually watching these videos or not. I don't think I don't think so. But thank you for pulling it from the source material. That's the way it should be. Never really use photos from figures. I know you're happy to have these figures coming out, and you're, you've done good work on these. But source material, I think, is really where it's at. Even though you can't really see anything that's happening on it. It's just a blue background, I know. That is the running it's the running joke. Peacemaker down below, and then there's Suicide Squad just below that. We flip it around. 
And again, your source material is Suicide Squad Films 2021. Why? No, not why. Why did it come out in 2021? But why is there no read up anything after that? I would like to know his real name. I'd like to know his size, his weight, more so his real name. And yet nothing featured on the back of the card. Put that to the side. The figure also comes in clue with a display stand. Same stand. I know I always say the same stand. It is literally the, well, it's, it's not literally the same. Literally implies it is the same stand. Like they took this stand from the one figure, stole it from the kid that had it in his hand, and then packaged it back in the other figure. That's what literally means. It's not literally the same stand. It's a similar stand. It's designed exactly the same, but it's not literally the same stand. You can't say literally. Anyways, as you can see, though, it's just a basic black stand, brandished, branded, pss, branded down below with the DC logo. And then there's the peg up the top corner. It's not literally, it's not literally. And then he comes included with one other accessory. He comes included with a sword. Yeah, it comes included with the sword. I would have included, I Personally, if I was designing this figure line, I would have included the gun. And I got to think at some point they had planned a gun to be released with pace, with Peacemaker. But sadly, instead, what we do get is a sword. I'm going to have to go to the tickle trunk of weapons and accessories I've got from other figures and see if I can actually find a gun. A gun is going to be the way I'm going to display the figure. I mean, when we look at his hand, you'll also see as well. But I mean, the sword for what it is, is not a bad looking sword. It's just, I, I, I question why it needed to be included. And I have read that some issues right now, figures can't come included with guns. Okay. I'm sure there are other figures out in the market that have guns right now. Fortnite figures come with guns. Why wouldn't they included a gun? I guess realistic guns maybe is the issue. But even then, Bloodsport didn't come included with a gun. So anyways, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. You guys got places you need to go. He does come with a sword. It's slightly softer, as you can see, made of a gunmetal plastic. And then they've actually painted the hilt a rather nice matte black. It can fit into his hands. Now, again, let me just grab the figure so you can see what's happening here. Well, one hand could be, say, I, I could say, okay, that hand looks like it should be grabbing something. This hand clearly looks, I mean, the way that they've designed the finger, look at it. That's telling you that's a trigger firing hand. I mean, even the shape, if you look at the inside of his palm, it looks like it's shaped like a rectangle, like for the actual handle of the gun. And yet, despite all that, he only comes included with a sword. Well, that's the accessory that he comes included with. Dang nabbit, that's going to be the accessory I'm going to display with the figure for now. Just, of course, while you're doing this, making sure you're getting around his thumb. It looks so out of place. Yeah, the sword looks nice, but... To give him the gun would have made such more of the valid reasons, but anyways, he comes included with the sword, being what it is. Take, go ahead and take that out of his hand, and we'll just put that to the side, and we'll never speak of that again, until, of course, we probably bring it back for final looks. Anyways, getting a closer look at Peacemaker, bearing quite a nice resemblance to... And I don't want to say former wrestler. I guess he is still wrestling on and off, just the odd occasional appearances. And I guess full, full-time full actor more so, John Cena. Whatever your feelings are about John Cena, Cena's acting ability, he seems to work better, I feel, for comedies. Action films, he's always so stiff. I just recently watched Fast and Furious 9. What a train wreck that was. And John Cena just seemed like he was made out of cardboard. His acting certainly was. Comedies, I think, where John Cena excels the most in. And I think he worked really well as Peacemaker. Now, that certainly when it goes for the figure, very much, again, looks like John Cena. Now, the thing about his head here, the helmet that he wears, one of the problems with filming the Suicide Squad was the helmet was so shiny. They had to be very careful where they angled the cameras so you wouldn't see the reflection on his helmet. Funny enough, though, they actually paint this helmet in the figure's case more of a silver color than they did a chrome. I would really love to see this guy get released either as a convention exclusive or GameStop exclusive or some exclusive where they could have chromed up the helmet. The silver works fine and good, but I think chroming up the helmet is really where it's at. That's the selling point of Peacemakers. His helmet is so incredibly shiny. Whether they vacuum formed a chrome finish to it, 
The silver works, but I don't think it works as well. What also certainly doesn't work well is when you look at the back of the figure and you look at his head sculpt, he sort of just has a really abrupt stopping point, and they didn't sculpt any hair or anything underneath here. I mean, you don't see it certainly from the front, but anybody that would want to turn their figure around, a valid reason for somebody to want to pick up the figure, can I turn it around? No, 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 no. You don't want to look at it from the back. I mean, I would look at that and say, hey, what, what, what's happening here? Do one of two things. Either sculpt the hair down at the bottom, if that's going to be something that's sticking out. Do number two, they could cut that right off and just have the end of the head stop where the helmet is. Or option number three, they could have also painted this in in silver, although it would have looked a little out of place having that painted in silver. Having just that little ledge of flesh-colored plastic looks so off to me because it gives me the idea not only that John Cena, sorry, Peacemaker, that his head is so big, but also the fact that he's bald underneath. So that's one thing I'm not really crazy about on the figure. The rest of it, though, comes together rather nicely. I mean, when we're looking at the top, for example, his short sleeve top, tight to his body, as you can see right there, is textured rather nicely. It's, again, relying on just the red plastic with only just the ends of the sleeves painted in blue, the interior painted in blue, and then the front area that also does have his logo painted rather nicely in there, too. He's got a collar, but it's not a collar that's close to his neck like when we looked at Polka Dot Man. So there's a little bit of mileage to work with, although really his, his articulation, he's not going to have any down here. He's only going to have it up the top here. But I like that there's a gap between the collar and his neck. Just frees up a little bit of space so it doesn't look like it's just sculpted to his neck. Again, like I like the texturing. The coloring is quite vibrant on him. Even just not only the top, but also down below on his pants. More of a lighter cream color with the accented areas done in blue. Where I may have had some issues before with the paint being somewhat rough on Bloodsport. I have quite the opposite feeling when it comes to uh, Peacemaker here. I find, like again, the paint's really clean. Nowhere is the blue really bleeding onto the, the areas around it. Even like the belt. Pretty, pretty clean when we're looking at it. Very muscular arms, of course. John Cena's very muscular build body. And one nice touch, something also that they did with Polka Dot Man, and technically also Bloodsport too, is when you get to the articulation on the figure that we'll talk about in a second, when you bend back the torso like this, yes, it's going to look more like a skinnier looking John underneath all that, but at least they sculpted the under area of the, of the shirt. I mean, one problem with it though, is that when you're having it straight on like this, straight front forward like this, there's a big gap. You see right there? How could you miss it? It's Of course it's right there. There's a big space between the belt and the top of his torso piece that you can almost even run your finger along in there. This open groove, I understand, had to be there for them for the purpose of articulation so you could actually be able to do this. But the end result, though, is it looks too spaced, too much of a gap. You can kind of compensate it by kind of bringing it down a little bit, but it's never really going to fix the problem. Even if you bring it forward, you can then notice a big gap on the back of his torso as well. Now, this would be a very hard argument to make, because again, if you want to have the figure be able to do this, then yes, sacrifices have to be made, and there has to be that little gap in there. If it was too close to his belt, you wouldn't be able to do this. So it's either you want the articulation on the figure, or you want a more finished looking body. It's really hard to have both unless they had put the articulation. Well, I guess they wouldn't even have been able to use a softer plastic on the top of his torso, which by the way, he does have a softer plastic. It may also even look like, I'm just going to bring in Polka Dot Man here for a second. I'm going to bring up his torso here. You know, just realizing this now, it looks like he shares, I know what you're going to say, that's not, the, that's not the same torso, but if you look at the body underneath it, it looks almost as if they're using the same body. And uh, granted, they would have textured the inside here. This one is more smoother, but the base body might actually be the same. I mean, this part right underneath here and right underneath here. So that's certainly where they can get the most mileage out of their molds is just basically making an overlaid piece that sits over top of the torso and again, you're just going to have that gap space underneath it. For the figure's articulation, by the way, the head rotates all the way around. It moves up and it moves down. 
and it actually gets much more of the mileage out of the head articulation than I think all the other figures that we've looked at so far for the Suicide Squad. And I can't imagine things would be changing as I continue to make John Cena very, very dizzy. I can't imagine things would be changing when we look at King Shark. Okay, I'll stop. For the arms, the arms hinge outward. And again, it looks like they've got the socketed joint on the inside, though it's really hard to access it, not to the point where you really see too much of it. I mean, yes, it allows the arms to come forward just a little bit, and it also allows the arms to come back a little bit, but at no point do you really see the socket joint hinging its way out where you see a lot more of it sticking out. I mean, I almost feel like the arms would have been able to do that without the socket joint even being in there in the first place. Uh, he does have a swivel at the bicep. Nicely put just below the sleeve, although, of course, when you twist it this way, it's going to look a little out of place. He does have a double hinge on the elbow. And the neat thing about it, though, is while you're looking at it from the front, yes, you're going to be seeing this big line where the where the, the hinge is, but at least it gives you somewhat of a finished look, even though the plastic seems to be a different color on the hinge than it does for the plastic on the arm around it. Anyways, though, he does have, like I said, the double hinge on the elbow. Yeah, the elbow is definitely a different color than the bicep, tricep, and the forearm area. I wonder why that's the case. Um, the hand or the top of the glove seems to be molded to the rest of the forearm. So the only place that you can rotate it after that point, after the elbow, is the hands. Rotate those all the way around and hinging them back and forth. Uh, the legs split out. Again, softer plastic down below here. Hinge the joints out. There's the inevitable crotch shot of the figure. Again, I don't want to think that this is going to be a regular occurrence here on this channel, but it always seems to be the case. The crotch shot of the figure. Legs go forward, legs go back, no problems. Double hinge on the knee, nice and tight. And again, like the knees, does it not seem to be a different color than the thigh and the lower leg below it? Strange, again, why the joints have to be a different color like that. No articulation in the top part of the boot, but at least the feet do hinge back and forth this way. You can also rock them back and forth this way, and he does also have toe articulation. And I'm not going to say it this time around. I'm not going to say, oh, I wish he didn't have visible ankle joints. Because I made that mistake before. I made that mistake when I commented that in the Harley Quinn review. Which, to be fair, really, the Harley Quinn d does still have some notable issues when it comes to her feet standing. Um, she doesn't have as much of an issue standing, though, as the other figures. I mean, like right there, I can get her to stand perfectly fine. So... I'm not going to say ever again, even though she did have visible ankle joints, at least she does have no difficulty standing. That is unlike Bloodsport, that is unlike Polka Dot Man, which I'm currently just getting him on his display stand as we speak. And there's the other figure right there. Boy, I've got him kind of leaning off to the side. There we go. This is the league that we've got so far. Four figures. Personal favorites from this. Actually, you know what? I don't even want to say personal favorites from this line. I mean, the only one that kind of, it doesn't, I don't like it as much is the blood sport. The Harley Quinn is nice. The Peacemaker is nice. The Polka Dot Man is really, really nice. And of course, in the upcoming review, because we're not going to, we want to spend a little bit more time talking, digesting, and being entertained by the sight of King Shark. His review will be coming up shortly. But I'm really, really happy with what McFarlane toys have been putting out here. Admittingly, each of the figures sort of have shortcomings in some of the departments. Generally, paint has been a problem with more so like blood sport. The other figures haven't haven't been affected as much. And one of the other problems, as I've already mentioned, I'm sure several times already, is yeah, two of the figures, you can probably see which ones, the ones that have the display stands right now have difficulty standing. I wish those I wish cases like that with both those figures, that that would have been something that they would have fixed before they released them. While I don't really like the idea of relying on a re-release of Peacemaker, I do think that down the road, they'd be a good idea to release this guy again. They could change things. I mean, they could keep the costume the same, and I'm pretty sure still we're going to be getting a re-release of Bloodsport with the unmasked Indris Elba head sculpt. Why couldn't they do something similar here for Peacemaker? Re-release him down the road with two different head sculpts, one without the helmet and then one with the helmet, and give the helmet, I feel, the much-needed chrome finish. Vacuum form is sort of a questionable thing that back in the 90s, it was all the rave. In fact, McFarlane Toys notoriously, for many of their waves, would release weapons a lot of times where the, 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 the blade, swords, spears, or anything, was usually done in vacuum form. Vacuum form usually is prone to having flaking problems down the road. 
but I'm sure technology with action figures, like, oh yeah, like I know a whole lot about making action figures, but pretty sure the technology has moved along well enough that they could find something similar to give them the chrome finish, the more shinier looking helmet. Because I think that's one thing that's lacking a bit on this figure release. And of course, the big glaring one is the fact he comes in clear with the sword. You may like the idea that he comes in clear with the sword, but I would rather much display him instead with the, the more trademark gun in his hand. I mean, the fact that they even gave him a hand specifically with a trigger finger, you got to believe that they had planned at one point to give him a gun. And I don't know whether regulations were just too tight that they had to swap things out instead, give him a sword. Because You know, swords just as safe as a gun. I mean, kids could run around with a big giant sword. I guess kids wouldn't run around with a big giant sword. Those things weigh a ton. But it, maybe releasing this guy down the road would be a, a solvable solution to fix the problem again, give him the chrome helmet, give him the gun, and maybe even release it as a convention exclusive, something that doesn't have to hit retail store shelves. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of Peacemaker, whether you picked up the figure for yourself or just based on this review. Of course, if you are doing the tally, checking off all those boxes, there was only four boxes, we've finished all four figures of the new DC Multiverse Suicide Squad wave. And as you probably already saw in this review, I've already put together King Shark. His review will be coming up shortly right after Peacemakers. So make sure you keep your peepers peeled to that. Of course, this is all good, fine and good, but the key to making sure that you're not missing out on any new videos that are popping up on this channel, two things, the first of which being that you can subscribe to this channel. That's crucial. That makes sure that you get in the know and of course, there's also the perks of hitting the bell notification so that you're telling YouTube that, yes, you want to get those friendly reminders of when new videos are going to be popping up, like, in fact, King Shark, which his review will be following up. Well, it's just right around the corner. All that's involved for me to do is just hit that record button, talk for a little bit, talk not hopefully too much, and then post it on YouTube. So the review of King Shark will be, like I said, right around the corner, time permitting. And of course, there's going to be a whole bunch of other DC Multiverse reviews lined up and coming your way as well. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time.